a lot of us that are fortunate or privileged to be in cannabis states that are illegal, we can go out and buy it whenever we want. However, we're not quite used to commodity pricing fluctuating due to real supply and demand. That is uh, when fires happen and inventories decrease, will that increase uh, post-harvest that, that following year? We're going to find out as we dive into a report from New Frontier Data about cannabis being one of the world's most valuable cash crops as we enter another a potential fire season. We're going to talk about what that means coming up. It's only entertainment. Welcome back to the Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. So we're going to take a look at this report on comparing how other major agricultural crops compare the amounts of water required to cultivate cannabis uh, and some of that um, being that cannabis is kind of nominal uh, impact regarding total water usage, there's other techniques that uh, can um, uh, reduce the amount of water, but there is a lot of pushback. Maybe, you know, there should be questions about environmental impacts since a lot of people don't know about cultivation of cannabis. Um, it requires a little bit of land, a little bit of water, and a whole lot of work. Um, so maybe that needs to be kind of explained a little bit better. There's a whole lot of uh, people pushing back on Bitcoin mining. Um, that doesn't take up a whole lot, but this is more about um, political maneuvering more than it is about conserving resources. We should all be thinking about that, but really this is about the bottom line. This is about money. This is about power and posturing more than it is about natural resources, in my opinion, although we should obviously be thinking about uh, water quality or uh, water conservation. And this is especially true as we look at... Um, We've done a few podcasts here at the Talking Hedge about Columbia. Uh, five cents is their cost of goods sold. Fifteen cents by the time it gets to Europe, you know, through all of the uh, tariffs, taxes, transportation, all of that. So when we compare something like coffee or tobacco that costs a dollar seventy-eight or two dollars per pound wholesale retail, you can get a pound of of tobacco for less than twenty dollars. Um, we're starting to see cannabis coming down even more. I bought a $40 ounce retail that was on sale that was 30% off. Um, so we're still seeing some some quality, higher quality cannabis between 1500 and 3000, but that is going to come down substantially. So cannabis H2O water use and sustainability and cultivation uh, reported that uh, with an in-depth look, there was some water usage in the regulated cannabis cultivation market. So it kind of revealed that it when it compares to the illicit market in traditional agricultural sectors, looking at it from a per pound basis, cannabis might be better off compared to other more valuable scarce cash crops. So mid-range cannabis in the U.S. costing around $1,500 a pound is comparable to the price per pound of um Saffron fetched in, in Delhi, India last year at $1,496. The same amount of Italian white truffles, $1,581. And notably, the substantial expense associated with saffron truffles are in part derived from the labor-intensive collection process for the former and the relatively rarity and the difficulty in procuring the latter. Consequently, cannabis is not only one of the world's most valuable cash crops, but the industry's market value has potential to increase dramatically. So cannabis might be one of the world's most valuable crops, but the industry's market value has the potential to increase dramatically um, with increases in production. So across the globe, we're seeing nations which have legalized cannabis for either medical or adult use. They've found the plant to be an enticing source of additional revenue. And at the same time, agricultural research and innovation should, should normalize cultivation practices, lead to greater resource efficiency. We should see vertical integrated agriculture, automation, and other things kind of bringing the uh, costs down as well as higher yields uh, and overall energy and resource um, conservation. Obviously, we're going to see some substantial hurdles remaining. You're going to have regulatory variances creating a transcontinental complexity and risk. You see the global cannabis industry remaining primarily engaged in just the medical markets until they get ev eviscerated like they always do. Consequently, there's going to be some countries that lead to a strict and disparate regulations governing cannabis imports. We've already seen that in Canada, some protectionism almost. Either way, there's going to be some guiding principles, variations in the way that some of these laws across the countries can result in some negative externalities. 
uh, introducing further difficulties for the international cannabis trade and then limiting the tremendous upside potential for the lucrative cash crop. But in the end, as soon as uh, all of it is a level playing field uh, with uh, open borders and fully world global legalization, it's going to be really hard to compete against a place like Colombia at you know 15 cents per gram in European um, GMP. Once that happens, it's going to be a massive amount of consolidation, even worse than, than anything that we've seen at the local level. Uh, so more reasons to move now with first mover advantages, there's opportunities to be consolidated. But, um, you know, like I've said, being a Larry's Handy Mart in a world of 7-Elevens is not really the route you want to go. There's um, a time for the smaller farmers to be reborn, kind of like, uh, you know, from rising from the ashes, if you will. Um, I think if you've seen smaller coffee um, kind of come around after Starbucks already destroyed the market, that's what you'll see. As soon as microbreweries can start to build up in a world of Budweiser, you know, that's, that's when you'll start to see that differentiated um, brands and strains and flavor profiles for discerning customers. That's going to take a while. I think, I don't think we're there yet. We have to have this kind of massive expansion and adaptation, adoption, legalization, Then there's going to be a massive amount of consolidation. And then eventually, hopefully, um, we'll have something that people actually really want to consume and smoke. <laughs> it's going to take a little while. So with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't. And I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.